So hi everyone, um, and welcome back to the uh, the second session of this um, tech mini school on uh, energy materials. Um, so I'm Dr. Graham Pleasance, and um, I should start by mentioning that uh, usually these these um, mini school sessions are, are hosted by um, Professor Francesco Fratticioni, who's the, the current interim director of uh, NITEC. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't be in, uh, here in person today to, to host this session. So um, I'm, I'm filling, on, filling in for him on his behalf. And um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, um, I'm a postdoc researcher um, in the, the quantum at some uh, group of Professor Fratticioni at Stellenbosch University. And um, so, yes, today is our second lecture in, 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 the, in the Energy Materials Mini School. And last week we had a very interesting lecture given by uh, Professor Georges Atlani. Um, and today I'm, I'm delighted to, to, to introduce um, Professor um, Yaldufana Sertaj, if I pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> and so, um, yes, today he will be um, delivering a talk on um, overcoming conductivity and over voltage challenges in uh, rechargeable metal ion and metal air batteries insights from DFT plus U studies. Um, so perhaps I can now hand over to uh, Dr. Kinsey Abodo to, to, to give a more thorough introduction to our speaker. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll just start by saying I met um, Yadil Fana when he was quite young in 2013 at Stanford. So we were attending um, a conference and um, then he was still at um, DTU. So, but formally, um, the Dauphana is now the current associate dean for the graduate school at the College of Natural and Computational Science in Addis Ababa University. He is, a, he is currently an associate professor with a um, specialty in the area of energy storage and conversion technologies. And he's primarily based in the Center for Environmental Science. He obtained his PhD from Technical University of Denmark in 2015. And at that point, he conducted part of some of his research at Stanford University. And he obtained his uh, master's degree in physical chemistry from AAU. So Professor Yadil Fana, ha he's conducted several research in the US, in China, as well as Italy. He's an associate at the Abdul Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics, ICTP since 2020. His research has led to successful national and international research projects in the field of energy focusing on batteries, fuel cells, solar cells, and bioenergy. He's been awarded several grants and award, he's been awarded multiple grants and also award in thematic areas. So particularly he's received, he received grant from the TWAS UNESCO in 2019. He's also gotten access to the CFN user facility grant in USA, which allows him to use a supercomputing facility. He has supervised to date about um, 30 graduate students and published over 35 research articles. Additionally, he is also the president of the Computational Science and Engineering Society of Ethiopia, and he holds the position of vice president in the Chemical Society of Ethiopia. So, um, Prof. Yedofana's research primarily focuses on using computational material science in particular, density functional theory and molecular dynamics to investigate reaction mechanisms such as transport phenomena in various electrode materials used in rechargeable metal ion batteries, metal air batteries, photon exchange medium fuel cells, diisensitized solar cell, as well as um, catalysis for biodiesel production. And so, based on his expertise, he will be giving us a presentation. On, on these systems. He also has um, he started developing a new expertise in the area of machine learning, but uh, maybe next time we would invite him to give us a talk in that, but today he won't be talking that. So without saying too much, um, Prof. Yadil Fana, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kinsey.
Can you see King my slides? Um, yes, we can see your slides. Can you hear, can you hear me and can you see my slide? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, the organizers, for inviting me to this mini school and also Kingsley uh, for a kind introduction. Uh, I'm Idil Fana, so I've introduced. I'm from Addis Ababa University. If you don't know where Addis Ababa is, it's uh, located in the eastern part of Africa. Uh, it's the capital city of uh, Ethiopia. So I, I work as a center for environmental science, especially on the energy uh, stream. So today uh, I will talk about batteries, mainly on lithium ion batteries, uh, sodium ion batteries and uh, metal air batteries. So I begin with the uh, overview of batteries, then uh, I'll give some uh, case studies, especially on the conductivity uh, measurements, conductivity studies uh, using DFT plus U uh, computational method. Then later I will talk about metal air batteries, the benefit and challenges in metal air batteries. It's a new a new battery type. It's a next generation uh, battery. Yet it's on uh, research and development. Uh, I'll give you some computational studies on reaction mechanisms and the absence and presence of uh, impurity, mainly or carbon dioxide uh, poisoning. Then uh, finally, I'll talk about uh, conductivity studies that we conduct in the discharge products in uh, lithium oxygen batteries and sodium oxygen batteries in the discharge product, as well as in the cathode electrolyte uh, interfaces. Finally, uh, we wind up, wind up with some. Uh, Conclusion or something. Yeah, to start with, uh, rechargeable batteries. In general, batteries have emerged as a dominant technology. These are a powerful energy storage devices that converts uh, chemical energy into electrical energy. They are portable, modular, flexible, uh, and you can apply in. in versatile uh, applications. Uh, as you know, uh, batteries or in general, electrochemistry uh, cells have uh, three main components. The, the two electrodes, I'm sorry. The two electrodes, the anode and the cathode and the uh, electrolyte. Uh, the principle in the lithium ion batteries actually is uh, insertion, lithium insertion uh, mechanism taking place. At the anode, uh, the oxidation is taking place. It releases electron, and at the ion, the electron are moving in the external circuit and do some works at the load, and uh, the ion is moving through the electrolyte to the uh, cathode side and get reduced uh, at the cathode. So the uh, electrolyte actually is uh, is a medium between the two electrodes that allows the transport of um, ions. In, in, in the cell. So this is the, uh, the schematics or some the animation, how, how the, this kind of batteries works during discharge and uh, during charging. Okay, the ion is moving inside the circuit, inside the electrolyte, but the electron is going in the external circuit. Uh, nowadays, batteries are used in almost everywhere you could find from small appliances to large scale uh, applications, including uh, powering electric vehicles, uh, used as uh, power backups, used in aeroplanes, in heavy trucks, and, and so on. And the rising demand for energy storage has also sparked significant interest uh, in batteries uh, research. For development of battery, these three people uh, share the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2019. So what are the desirable futures or properties of uh, batteries? Actually, we want our battery to contain high energy capacity, long lasting performance, fast charging capability, affordability, safety, and, and so on. 
However, uh, the way we are tackling, the way we are doing research maybe vary from place to place. So how do we search for materials with uh, desirable property? In our group, uh, we implement computational methods, uh, material screening through a computational method to search for a material with desirable, with promising uh, properties. For instance, this group have done a lot of computational works, uh, uh, advanced computational tools, in different uh, compounds, uh, oxide, phosphate, borate, silicate, and surface to search for a good or promising uh, cathode material for uh, lithium ion batteries. They calculate the lithium insertion voltage uh, versus the theoretical capacity. And as you can see in the, inside the, uh, the red circle, the materials are uh, isolated or identified as a promising uh, material for application as a cathode in the, in the lithium ion batteries with a voltage uh, above 3.5 and the capacity above 350 milliamp hour per, per gram. These are really promising, and this is obtained through uh, just only computational methods. This really saves time, energy, and money. So using computational method, we can really save all of us a few years, or it speeds up the search for the materials uh, desired with the desired properties. Those materials in the in the in the year red circle are uh, layered materials, spinel, olivine, and uh, taborite structure. Some of the layered uh, in spinel and olivine are listed here in this uh, in this table. Their specific capacity, their voltage, their volumetric capacity is really uh, impressive and promising. So most of them are. Uh, already commercialized, but some of them are under research and, and development. We are still uh, considering uh, some of these compounds who are under research and development, considering uh, to, to see their uh, properties, if they fit to the cathode as a cathode material or, or not. Or we also still improve the, the, the properties that it has. We can improve, for example, the conductivity, by using uh, different uh, techniques or mechanisms, I will, I will come to that later on. So in different applications, you could find different uh, cathode materials. For example, in the Tesla Model S, uh, the cathode material they use are lithium, nickel, cobalt, aluminum, it's a mixture of uh, metal oxides. And, and for Apple iPhone, they use uh, pristine lithium cobalt oxide, 100% cobalt. Metal there, and for Nissan Leaf, they use uh, lithium manganese oxide, and for Tesla Power Wool, they use a mixture of uh, metals manganese, cobalt, uh, and uh, nickel. So as you can see from the from this graph on top, uh, when you use a mixture of uh, metals, you increase the specific capacity compared to the uh, only uh, cobalt instead of lithium cobalt oxide. So this is uh, one uh, area of research, just mixing different metals and see if the specific capacity is improved or, or not. Very recently, uh, we also uh, seen new materials in addition to this oxide, manganese, silicate, borates and like. Uh, they call it lithium rich layered oxide, the one with the with the blue the blue color in the left side of the graph. So the capacity is, is really by far higher than the traditional uh, metal oxides. So how this actually happens because uh, they in incorporate lithium to oxide into the traditional ones and increase the the lithium concentration in, so that the rate of uh, and the capacity uh, also increases uh, at the same time. So what are the challenges, the main drawbacks in the lithium ion batteries? These are the existing and the state of the art batteries nowadays everywhere. The challenge is the high price, mainly due to the cost of the lithium metal and cobalt and slow charging, capacity fading and limited energy and power density. That is compared with the with the gasoline, and environment impact and safety issues is still there. 
main reason behind the capacity fading, limited energy, which means uh, specific energy capacity uh, and uh, limited uh, power density is mainly because of the cathode component of the battery, which is the heaviest component at the same time, the insulator, the cathodes, unfortunately, they're supposed to be uh, metals or good conductors, but uh, the existing cathode materials, even with the commercialized cathode materials are insulators with a band gap of three and above uh, three electrovolt. This actually hinders their uh, large scale uh, applications. So uh, if you want to have high capacity, high uh, energy, high, high specific energy, when you say specific energy, it is the amount of energy per, per kilogram of the, the mass of the, the active uh, species or active material. So uh, the material should be uh, lighter as much as possible. But unfortunately, uh, the existing cathode materials are heavier, uh, heavy due to the presence of these uh, uh, transition metals and, and the like. So they are heavy and at the same time, they are also poor, both uh, ionic and uh, electronic uh, uh, conductivity. So these are the main challenges and we are trying to uh, tackle this problem by uh, utilizing or by employing uh, advanced computational method, which I will talk about it later. So uh, how to improve the conductivity of uh, the cathode materials? Improve the conductivity in battery is crucial for enhancing the performance of the battery. The commonly employed strategies to address the conductivity uh, issues are the electrode engineering. Uh, we transform the bulks. If the bulks are uh, insulated, then transform into surface, and we can also modify the surface. The another uh, strategy is incorporating conductive uh, coatings of the surface and we adding some impurities, which can enhance the, uh, the conductivity of the, uh, the, the bulk material, and also uh, introduce lattice strain, just alter, change the geometry of the, uh, the cathode, and that, that actually results in a change the, the conductivity positively. The other is uh, materials design, materials screening. We can design a new material with the desired uh, properties that are what we're looking for uh, for the good uh, battery uh, material. And the other is the interface engineering. We can also introduce interface as we have heard last, last week from uh, Professor uh, George. Uh, interface is also a new class of material that can be used to improve the conductivity also in, in, in the battery uh, applications. So uh, to do this, we actually employ the state-of-the-art density functional theory, which is um, a quantum mechanical theory-based uh, approach, uh, mainly used in physics, chemistry, and material science to investigate the electronic structure of atoms, molecules, and condensed phases, in our case for inorganic compounders. Uh, DFT has become the most popular and versatile method to study electronic structure properties of materials. Not only battery materials, but any, any class of materials is really uh, very interesting. And this replaces the money body electronic wave function with the electronic density. In DFT, you will have only three degrees of freedom, three variables, X, Y, Z, no matter the size of the, the, the unit cell or the super cell, you are going to consider only three degrees of freedom. But in the traditional ones, in the previous uh, computer method that uh, rely on wave function, we have three N, N is the number of particles. So as the number of particles increases, then the computational uh, calculation is going to be very tough. It can be very complex. Uh, Professor Walter Kahn won a Nobel Prize, uh, again in chemistry, for his remarkable work in, in the development of uh, DFT in, in 1998. So uh, DFT is, uh, has a good compromise between accuracy and the size of the system. Uh, we can tackle the size up to 100 atoms. 
normally we we use a, un, a unit cell or maybe few uh, repetitions uh, to set up the the super cell. But so far we are still in a, in hundred in hundred twenty uh, atoms uh, limit. Uh, however, uh, the ordinary DFT uh, perfectly works only for metals. But as I said before, unfortunately, uh, the battery materials, which are the cathodes, are uh, insulator and they are non-metals. So ordinary DFT may not be good or perfectly describe the property of our materials. So instead, uh, we use or we have been using DFT plus U. This is an extension of DFT that uh, include the uh, correction term uh, U uh, derived from uh, Hubbard's model uh, mathematical expression. It is specifically designed to better capture the behavior of the localized D electrons with a strong electron correlation, uh, for example, in the transition metal oxides. So as you have already seen, the, uh, the uh, cathode materials have the transition state, so the D electron should be accurately described with our method. So we apply U to localize our D electrons. Otherwise, the ordinary DFT may consider as normal as, as a metal, so that you cannot see the real uh, open up band gaps that we expect from the from metals. So DFT plus U uh, accurately uh, describe uh, these D electrons in the transition metals. So the meta uh, is actually DFT is uh, implemented in GPAL. We uh, use a GPAL mostly, and also uh, is uh, quantum espresso. And sometimes we use BASP, especially for fuel cell kind of application, but for battery, we, mostly we use a GPAL. And it's also developed in my previous uh, university, and I had uh, good experience with uh, GPAL. And DFT plus U is also implemented in all the three. DFT course. And again, for uh, building the atomic structure and also see the molecular dynamic, the analysis, the visualization of the crystal structure, we use the uh, atomic simulation uh, environment uh, software, which is very uh, and user friendly software. Another important thing, thing that I want to mention here is the, the method. Uh, the method we use uh, to study the ionic transport in uh, materials, in the battery materials, is uh, NAD elastic band method, NAB method, uh, which is within DFT, uh, and it's really a uh, very good approach so far. You know, all this DFT course is implemented in UPAL, in Quantum Espresso, as well as in BASP, which allows you uh, or it helps you understand or estimate the energy barrier uh, of the path that you actually uh, consider in your uh, within the within the materials. So it's very crucial to predict the ionic conductivity. If you really know the the energy barrier, the amount of uh, energy required, or the minimum or the threshold energy required to diffuse one uh, ion from the initial state to the final state that gives you the idea of the conductivity. Using the uh, Arrhenius equation, as you see on the left side, you can calculate the rate of the diffusion, the average rate of the diffusion from, from the Arrhenius uh, equation. The only variable here is the uh, activation energy or the energy uh, barrier. Then KB, T, and V are the constants for that uh, class of material. So if you know the value for the EB or the activation energy, then you can easily calculate the rate. And from the rate, you can calculate the, the diffusion constant. So this NAP actually gives you the minimum energy pass. As you can see in the contour plot on the right side, it gives you the, uh, the minimum energy contour plot. So what are the steps to uh, run the NEP uh, calculation is that first you need to uh, optimize or relax the initial and the final state. This is the first uh, step. And then you need to guess the path that the ion may might take during the diffusion between the initial and the, the final state. 
So uh, then you need to provide intermediate steps. Depending on the resource available, you can increase the number of in intermediates, but at least you need to have one or three. We usually uh, use five uh, intermediates. This is what you see in the middle of the slide. Okay, so the setup has a band that connects these intermediates. This band is actually its elastic band, just like a spring so that uh, the, the position of these ions be fixed at the point and the energy minimization will be taking place. So as I have told you already before, the initial and the final are uh, optimized. So the, the intermediate would be optimized or the energy would be minimized during the NEP calculation. Okay, so this way, uh, Iteratively, it runs and finally it gives you the the map, uh, the path, the trajectories we're going from initial to final with the with the barrier uh, energy. So from the barrier, as I told you, you can calculate easily the rate and the diffusion constant. This is this is the method that we employ implement for uh, lithium ion, sodium ion, and also metal air batteries throughout uh, the study that I also am also presenting today. So there are two mechanisms to study this diffusion. One is the uh, uh, interstitial uh, approach. In, this, in the interstitial approach, you add a single uh, metal ion uh, and see how this uh, added uh, metal ion is moving, uh, moving around within that material. That is what we call interstitial, just adding additional uh, metal ion. But the one that we are implementing here is actually is a vacancy mediated diffusion. Okay, we create a vacancy just by removing a single metal atom. We create a vacancy, and now using a net, we follow the the vacancy. The vacancy follows the the lithium ion follows the vacancy. So if you calculate the net for the vacancy indirectly, you are measuring the net for the lithium ion, right? So uh, this is uh, the case study or we uh, calculate the lithium ion diffusion in bulk lithium manganese silicate is one class of uh, cathode material uh, with uh, good voltage and capacity. So this is the pristine one. We don't add any anything, just the pristine uh, bulk material. We only create vacancy and study the elastic band uh, paths. Then we consider as much as possible, uh, we can do in all the X and in Y and Z uh, directions. And we found the, um, the profile, as you can see in this uh, graph. Most of the channels, most of the diffusions are below 0 0.8 electrovolt with activation energy. But one of them is actually high or diffusion in that direction is at least totally limited. It's not easy to diffuse uh, for the particular case, this lithium to diffuse in that, in that direction because the barrier is, is extremely large. Okay, even the others are large. Why we can't consider uh, acceptable or minimum uh, barrier is 0 0.5 or below that. But unfortunately in this case, all the diffusion uh, activation energy barriers are above 0 0.5, right? So we need to uh, implement some of the strategies as I mentioned earlier, either surface engineering or lattice strain or interface or doping, whatever. So uh, in our case, for this particular example, we uh, use the surface engineering uh, mechanism to improve the conductivity of the bulk uh, lithium manganese silicate. So what we did here is we have uh, initial bulk. Then from the initial bulk, we cut into uh, cut in different uh, facets. We consider one zero 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 one zero 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 one two one zero and calculate the surface energies as you can see in this table. And at the same time, we also uh, compute the Wolf construct equilibrium shape of lithium manganese based on the uh, related energies that we obtain from DFT plus U. So what uh, we get is 0, 0, 001, as you can see here in the wolf, uh, 0, 0, 001 is highly exposed facets with about 35.64% of the overall surface is 
uh, expose or dominant surface is 001. And the surface energy is also very good. So we, we select, we identify 001 as a stable and highly exposed surface and make it ready for further analysis. We continue with the electronic structure calculation and found this, uh, these pl plots. If you look at the, uh, the top one is for the bulk lithium manganese silicate and we compute estimate 3.42 electrovolts, which is the, uh, the band gap of the insulator, right? It's a nanometer. This is for the bulk and we employ uh, the value of U3 electrovolt. Whereas the 001 facets is found to be half metallic with less than one electrovolt of the band gap. You can see the, 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 the difference or the, the, the range between the homo lumo or in chemistry or in physics balance in conduction value, right? The gap is really too small. This means the electronic property is improved, is more uh, better metallic property that we found for, for the surface. This is what actually uh, we're looking for for battery uh, material. Next, we uh, compute or we calculate the net elastic band calculation for the surface. For the bulk, we have seen already before. This is uh, the top one is for the bulk. And for the surface, we tried uh, some four uh, channels, lithium diffusion channels, and we found all of them below 0 0.4 electrovolt, which is below 0 0.5. And as I've told you before, this is acceptable and it definitely improves the, the ion mobility, it makes it very easy and the ion is very fast diffusion can be taking place. So if you compare the bulk in the surface, the surface diffusion was found to be fast and improved the, the conductivity with an over 12 uh, order of magnitude enhancement is obtained in, in the surface compared to the bulk, which is very much uh, improvement. The other strategy to improve or enhance uh, applying strain, we actually apply strain for sodium manganese silicate, it's a, it's a bag gel strain in, in both in, in, on the plane in in, uh, in ZDX plane. Then what we found is that when we stretch the tensile stretching up to four percent of the lattice, the the uh, the barrier or the activation energy is significantly uh, improved. If you look at uh, the left side, if you look at the, the black one, it's around 0 0.5 for the unstrained uh, case. And when we apply strain, if you look at the green one from the right side, for plus 4 percent means um, tensile stretching is taking place with 4 percent of lattice, but the, the barrier is significantly improved. It's reduced from around 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. In terms of red, uh, three order of magnitude enhancement is obtained uh, for the system that uh, applies a strain, biological strain. So these are the case studies that we have conducted in lithium uh, ion batteries. And my, my former PhD student work uh, the previous uh, uh, results. And the other, uh, class of battery that I want to talk uh, today is the metal air, air battery, sorry. So this metal air battery uh, actually uh, is a recent uh, new battery with high uh, specific uh, energy with five to 10 times greater than the existing lithium ion battery which is actually very much comparable with, with the gasoline. That's actually what we are intending to have uh, for, for future. So uh, the first metal air battery was uh, lithium oxygen battery. During my PhD, uh, I work on a lithium oxygen battery. And uh, later, again, during my PhD, I also continue working on uh, sodium uh, oxygen 
uh, battery. So their theoretical as well as their practical uh, specific energy is really very huge. Uh, and it's a pro very promising uh, battery type, not only in terms of specific capacity or spe uh, specific energy, but also economically, uh, they are also going to be cheaper. So we are uh, aspiring to see these kind of batteries on road, but yet uh, there are so many uh, scientific uh, as well as technical challenges that we need to uh, uh, address before the technology enter into the market. So what is the uh, working principle on um, these batteries? Unlike uh, that of the lithium-ion batteries where there is an insertion of uh, lithium, here it is a growth mechanism. There is a reaction between uh, the metal ion and oxygen, but it is a growth mechanism the lithium oxygen or lithium oxide or lithium superoxide will grow on the surface of the uh, porous uh, carbon at the uh, cathode side of the battery. So let's see this animation and see how, how it works. So oxygen is coming from the atmosphere and the electron from the inner side is used to reduce this oxygen and the ion is coming from the from the anode, so the electrolyte, we combine with this reduced oxygen and forms superoxide, metal superoxide. And it is a two electron uh, process. Then the next step will go on. And again, the uh, two electron uh, be used and form uh, metal oxides. In this case, lithium two, oxygen two, lithium oxide will be uh, formed during discharge of the uh, at the porous uh, cathode. So our cathode in this case is oxygen, right? It inhales oxygen from the atmosphere and we only carry the lithium as the active species from the anode side Then gets oxidized from the anode, the electron goes to the external circuit, the lithium ion goes in, through, through the electrolyte ion and combine with the reduced oxygen and form the, uh, lithium oxide uh, compound. During charging, uh, oxygen will evolve out and the ions or the active species go back to where they were and store at the uh, anode side, right? And oxygen will evolve out. So this is the typical uh, metal oxygen battery uh, working principle. So what are the challenges in the lithium oxygen batteries? As I said before, they are promising but there are a lot of challenges need to be addressed before you go to the market. The main challenge with the metal oxygen batteries are their high over voltage. As you can see here, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the nominal voltage or the theoretical voltage that we are expecting to get from this battery type is around three volt. Okay, but as you can see the, the bottom curve we uh, experimentally we found around 2.6 watts with a capacity of uh, 560. You see, so the difference between 2.6 and 3 is what we call it uh, discharge over voltage. And the one with charging actually, it is extremely large. During the battery, uh, when the battery works, we got around 2.6 volt. But when we charge the battery, we have to apply up to 4.2 volt. You see? So this is uh, the disadvantage. We need to reduce the over voltage in both discharge and charge over voltage. Particularly the charge over voltage is, is a serious, serious problem in, in lithium oxygen. But this is a typical, uh, graph of the discharge and charge profile of the lithium oxygen batteries. So the conductivity issue is also there. Lithium oxygen or lithium oxide is a uh, large band gap material with around with over four electrovolt. And the, the side product, which is a lithium uh, carbonate is also even the worst. It's around eight electrovolts band gap material. So this material should be, uh, the conductivity should be improved. And we'll, we'll apply the same mechanism as we apply in, in, in a metal uh, ion batteries. 
The electrolyte decomposition is also an issue. A slow oxygen reduction reaction, the cathode size is again a problem that results in low current in the power densities. The safety issue, especially the dendrite formation in the cathode and the anode in the anode side of the battery is again is a big issue. Air impurity. Okay, so far people have uh, tested uh, with pure oxygen, but when this technology into the market, we don't use uh, pure oxygen because we don't carry any any mass. We want oxygen to be inhaled from the atmosphere, right? So we need to study the effect of carbon dioxide, the effect of air impurities uh, that can enter along with the oxygen uh, during the practical uh, uh, metal or uh, air batteries. So these are the, the challenges. And in my, during my PhD, I tried to uh, uh, investigate the cause for overvoltage, particularly for uh, charge overvoltage. So to study the overvoltage issue, we again employ the DFT plus U because um, our materials are nanometers. And uh, how the air impurity uh, affects the growth mechanism and the resulting overvoltage calculation would be uh, investigated in this part of uh, our study. So, a strategy focused on regulating overvoltage. We, we want to minimize it, uh, we want to minimize or reduce the overvoltage, particularly the, the charge overvoltage using different uh, strategies. Uh, I will maybe talk about the interface engineering uh, mechanism to reduce the overvoltage issue in this case. So uh, I already informed you that it's not intercalation, rather it's a growth mechanism. So we want to uh, model the, the surface. So we have the hexagonal lithium oxide from hexagonal lithium oxide, we form a surface and we found one one bar zero zero is the most stable and highly exposed uh, surfaces in, in a real uh, or in a practical uh, lithium oxygen batteries. So this is, uh, I think it is three by three uh, uh, surface of one one bar zero zero. And we want to see how the lithium oxide is uh, growing on the surface of, of uh, this one one bar zero zero facet. So this is uh, my surface. Now uh, I check if the first step is either absorption of lithium or absorption of chemical oxygen or absorption of lithium superoxide or maybe other species. And the deficit tells me that the first step is that absorption of lithium superoxide at the kink uh, site with the uh, energy of 2.69. This is not just found with a single calculation or with a one shot calculation. I tried several sites, several uh, places and several other species which came as the first step, and finally I uh, identify the lithium superoxide at this particular site is the first uh, preferred uh, step with this energy. And the second step with my model is again uh, another addition of lithium superoxide with 2.77 uh, energy. The third and the fourth are addition of lithium. Uh, I am to the surface, then the growth mechanism will be uh, finished with two formula units, lithium-2 or two uh, formation. So this is my uh, model, it's, it's a four electron system model. Then I convert these uh, energies into the graph of the free energy uh, diagram. Just I, I use those uh, energies from step one to step four and uh, finally see this uh, down, downhill uh, uh, free energy uh, diagram. Downhill tells me that we are getting energy. It's just spontaneously, so absorption, you get this amount of energy in each step. The average, you, you sum up all and divide by four, then you get 2.73. This is the equilibrium potential. This computationally, we got 2.73. If you remember in the experiment, they found 
uh, vote. So the experiment in the competition is much in a good agreement. So from this, the four steps, uh, the last state, the last addition of lithium is found to be the limiting uh, discharge potential. And because this is the smallest energy that I got from these steps, and the third step is found to be the limiting charge potential. This is the highest one. So if I want to charge this, this particular uh, steps, the, the third step actually requires a relatively large amount of energy to, to charge. So if you subtract the minimum from the uh, uh, equilibrium and subtract the equilibrium from the maximum, you get the over voltage. The discharge over voltage is going to be 0 0.07 and the charge over voltage is going to be 0 0.05, which means both cases, it is insignificant. That means if you apply pure oxygen, there is no uh, over voltage issue can be rest, you see? So the one that we have seen in the, in the experiment is, is because of the air impurity, this one indication, because in pure oxygen, we don't find any over voltage uh, issues. So these are the, how we calculate the discharge. Always we co compute from the equilibrium. Now, if this is a case, let's see uh, one of the air impurity that can enter along with the oxygen, which is carbon dioxide. Why we ca consider carbon dioxide? The main reason is that this carbon dioxide actually easily interact or easily react with lithium peroxide and lithium superoxide and forms lithium carbonate species, which require actually high over potential to oxidize. This compound, once it's uh, formed, it's not easy to oxidize and to charge with the battery. You see, so this could be one, one reason. The other reason is the carbon dioxide is highly soluble in organic electrolytes. Even uh, solubility is 50 times higher than that of the solubility of oxygen in, in organic electrolytes. So we need to consider the carbon dioxide uh, effect uh, battery time. The other uh, thing is that there are uh, three ways of uh, uh, getting uh, carbon information. One is from the electrolyte decomposition. If you remember, we have the electrolyte, right, between the two electrodes. Usually in this battery type, we use a non aqueous electrolyte, it's a protic electrolyte, it's organic electrolyte. So uh, when they decompose, they actually provide you or they actually release carbonate. We have a lithium ion in our system. So lithium ion interacts with this carbonate and forms lithium carbonate. This is a problem because lithium carbonate cannot be easily uh, oxidized once it is formed in, in the battery. The other possibility is from air contamination, as we already said, if carbon dioxide enter, then it can decompose into carbonate and form lithium carbonate. The third possible scenario is uh, graphite can decompose. We have a, a porous carbon, right? That supports the growth of the lithium oxide at the cathode site. So this graphite may decompose and the decomposition product could be uh, carbonate. So there are possibilities of having a carbonate. So we need to consider uh, how the growth mechanism is taking place in the presence of uh, carbon dioxide uh, that results in carbon formation. We tested different sites of the uh, 1, 1 bar 0, 0 uh, lithium oxide surfaces, and we found the Step Valley site is the preferred uh, absorption site for carbon dioxide. As you can see here in this uh, structure, uh, there is some restructuring upon addition of uh, carbon, carbon dioxide because of the formation of lithium carbonate-like structure on the surface. This definitely uh, alters the, the, the low uh, over voltage pathways, the minimum energy nucleation, uh, nucleation pathways or nucleation sites. Another issue is here is that once the carbon dioxide is adsorbed as this step valley site, it cannot easily be uh, removed from the system because as you can see in this graph in the, in the, in the left side at the bottom, 
the uh, the activation energy uh, barrier is uh, exceeding three electrovolt, which means it's not easy, right? So once it's absorbed, you cannot easily remove from the system. So it definitely uh, affects the growth mechanism. Uh, as a result, it affects the overvoltage. We will see in the in the next uh, few slides see how it looks the free energy diagram. So um, as the initial, we have the pristine the one one bar zero zero surface, which is a stable in highly surface. Then we introduce uh, carbon dioxide. We add small uh, molecules, uh, carbon dioxide molecules in our system. We add only a single uh, carbon dioxide molecule to our super cell and relax uh, the the surface and get an optimized the restructured uh, surface. Then we start studying how the lithium peroxide is growing on the surface in the presence of carbon dioxide. So just like in the pristine case, in the pure oxygen case, again here, the first step was uh, lithium oxide with the uh, energy uh, of, uh, 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 sorry, uh, let me minimize it. Yeah, with the energy of 2.25 as the first step. And again, the second step is 2.97. And the last two steps are additional lithium to the surface. And the growth mechanism will be completed with four electron uh, process with the formation of two formula units, lithium uh, oxide. So in this case, the uh, equilibrium potential is reduced to 2.5. If you remember in the pristine, we found 2.73, now 2.53. Carbon dioxide also uh, caused to reduce the equilibrium potential. And let's see how the over voltage looks like from the free energy diagram. So this is the free energy diagram. Just we implement those energies that we obtain from DFT to draw this graph and see how the over voltage and how the energy equilibrium potential looks like. So the red one is in the presence of carbon dioxide. The blue graph or the blue uh, lines are for pure oxygen system. So as you can see here, especially the over voltage, the discharge and charge over voltage exceeds from uh, previously, if you remember it was 0 0.007, right? For discharge, now it's increased to 0 0.31. For charge from 0 0.08, it's increased to 0 0.44. This is really uh, immense, it's huge difference in over voltage. So the typical in, uh, experiment that we found the higher over voltage is due to the carbon dioxide. This is just a verification from our DFT uh, study. Okay. Uh, again, my colleague uh, also uh, verified this during experiment and he found uh, the increase in over voltage even at 1% of carbon dioxide. This is just the experiment work. At 1% carbon dioxide, uh, the over voltage increases. When he tries at 50% carbon dioxide, the capacity immediately uh, gets uh, fed. Uh, as you can see in the left side here, you see, the capacity gets dropped. It's what we call it in technical term is a sudden days. Sudden days doesn't last longer. It's immediately uh, quenched, immediately stopped at 50% carbon dioxide and 50% oxygen. The same thing uh, happened for the charging process. Large voltage is required to charge uh, when there is a large amount of carbon dioxide in our. Uh, Yes. Okay, that is what we did for a reaction mechanism and see the causes for over voltage in metal uh, air batteries. The other uh, class of uh, study in the metal air batteries, uh, sorry, do I have enough time? Oh, sorry. Let me try to finalize it within five, 10 minutes. So uh, like in lithium ion uh, batteries, we also perform conductivity studies uh, in discharge products of lithium and sodium uh, air batteries. Uh, here you see the density of state plot. As you can see here, 
uh, all the three materials, both the discharge products as well as the cathode uh, electrolyte interface, uh, exhibit a high uh, high band gap, 5.02 electron for lithium oxide for the interface, 4.8 and for lithium carbonate, eight electron volt. You see, this is a large band gap in material, so these are uh, insulators. And next to the electronic properties, we, we also study the diffusion uh, or the ionic conductivity in the bulks of uh, these uh, discharge products. The main discharge product in a lithium oxygen battery is lithium oxide, lithium carbonate actually the, the side product, right? So if you look at the typical uh, lithium ion diffusion in lithium peroxide, we found uh, this result. Both in X and Y, actually we found higher uh, activation energy, close to one electrovolt. But uh, along the Z direction, along the interlayer, uh, we found very small uh, activation energy, uh, which actually we call it, it's a one dimensional diffusion. Uh, it's on the uh, preferred uh, channel or preferred diffusion in a lithium oxide. So other two directions, in the Y, in the Z, uh, the, the diffusion is very much limited. So this is not really, really good. So we need to improve uh, the conductivity of this material. We are actually expecting this material to conduct in all you know, uh, the directions so that we can have a good capacity and can last longer. Uh, when it comes to the lithium carbonate, actually, uh, except one of these uh, channels, most of or the other channels are less than 0 0.5. And we found this is uh, prefer preferentially diffuse in, in all uh, the three uh, directions. So if you ask me how much is the rate, uh, it is with the order of two times 10 to the power of six per second. This is the rate of the lithium diffusion. Uh, along the interlayer diffusion in the lithium, lithium oxide and in the lithium carbonate, the average diffusion is uh, with the 10 to the power of eight uh, per second, which is really a lot. So it's not, the ionic diffusion is not limited in, in the lithium, in lithium carbonate, I would say. So, um, The other uh, material that we consider is the cathode electrolyte interface. The, the pristine or the bulks, uh, the cathode are uh, more or less uh, investigated in many places, but uh, all those, uh, we consider the cathode electrolyte interface computationally because we already say that lithium carbonate potentially form it, right? Uh, as a side product, and we have already lithium oxide, so there is a possibility of having lithium oxide, lithium carbon interface, and we don't know the, the how the electrons are transported, how the ions are transported in these materials. As far as they are in, inside the battery uh, confinement, so we need to study and uh, investigate the properties. We implement the same DFT plus U and calculate the NAP calculations, and luckily, we don't find any uh, activation barrier, except the thermodynamic uh, the, the thermodynamic difference between uh, the two uh, states, the initial and the final. So the uh, the ions can easily uh, transport from uh, peroxide part of the interface to the carbonate part of the interface with only the thermodynamic difference between the two, the two states. And again, we apply the same thing for sodium. Uh, batteries, sodium superoxide with sodium carbonate, and we calculate uh, the NEP calculation, and we found very interesting results. This is actually the dose plot. The pristine sodium superoxide actually, as I told you before, is a wide band gap material, but when it comes to the interface, we found half metallic character, which is very good in the desired property that we expect also to have all the battery materials uh, so this diffusion studies, again, uh, revealed good uh, conductivity measurements. All the considered uh, diffusion channels found be below 0 0.5. This results with high uh, rate of diffusion in all X, Y, and Z uh, directions. 
in the bulk of sodium superoxide, at the same time in the interface of sodium superoxide and uh, sodium uh, carbonates. This is the interface. And again, from the interface, we got only less than 0. Point, or around 0. 0.3, which is exactly 0. 0.33 electrovolt. When you convert this uh, barrier into the red using Arrhenius equation, you found something like 2.6 to the power of seven per second. And the resulting diffusion coefficient is 2.96 times to the power of minus eight square centimeter per second. So we can conclude that uh, the interface, sodium superoxide, sodium carbon interface, revealed a magnificent uh, ionic uh, conduction. So this is the advantage. So in conclusion, in rechargeable metal ion batteries, surface diffusion, uh, as well as uh, uh, biaxial strain uh, significantly uh, improves the conductivity measurement. And uh, to conclude, uh, in metal air batteries, uh, even though uh, the materials are wide band gap material that exceeding four electrovolt, uh, however, the F offers fast ionic conduction with an activation barrier of 0 0.4. Their ionic conductivity is very good, even though they are not uh, metallic or they are wide band gap uh, materials. The other thing that we can conclude here is that the main discharge product in sodium uh, oxygen batteries, that is a sodium uh, superoxide, exhibited uh, preferred sodium ion diffusions in all the 3D uh, channels, all in X, Y, and Z pathways, unlike that of uh, one-dimensional diffusion in a lithium oxygen uh, discharge product, which is uh, lithium, oxygen, lithium oxide. And in the interfaces, we found very small uh, activation barrier, which actually exhibits or results in fast uh, ionic diffusion. So using DFT plus U, uh, we, can, we can investigate the ionic diffusion studies. So these are my former and current uh, PhD students working on battery materials. Some of them are actually supervised uh, in close uh, collaboration with Professor Kingsley Obodo. And recently we also start collaborating with uh, Professor uh, Tijar with, uh, for uh, student Asras Alula with our PhD, uh, recent PhD student working on uh, course in the other system. These are the facilities uh, myself and my graduate students uh, uh, used to run the DFT calculation. We do have uh, remote access to the ICTP Argon cluster. Again, we do have access to uh, SBCC uh, cluster at the Brookhaven National Laboratories in the US. And again, you know, we still have access to the DTU, Denmark Technical University, my previous uh, institute, uh, Nephilim cluster. And uh, we have also uh, remote access to CHPC through uh, Professor uh, Kingsley uh, Obodo. Myself and graduate students have access to run these conductivity studies and other uh, studies in fuel cells, solar cells, CO2 reduction, hydrogen storage. Other students are working on other technologies. These are my international collaborators uh, from Brookhaven National Laboratories. Uh, I collaborate with Professor Chin. From uh, ICTP, I collaborate with uh, Professor Nicola and from the uh, Pura University, Prof. Kong, and from my previous university, my previous uh, supervisors, uh, Professor Thais, Professor Joa Maria, Professor Heiner, and also my colleagues in South Africa, uh, Professor Kingsley, Professor Tichat, and Professor Kenneth Ozomena. I would like to acknowledge my former current students, uh, this institute, and also uh, uh, names I mentioned earlier. Thank you very much. Now I wind up my presentation here. If you have questions, you are welcome. Uh, thank you very much for a very nice presentation. Yes, thank you very much, um, Professor Sataj, for that very interesting presentation. Um, are there any questions? I don't see any uh, questions in the chat at the moment, but um, Feel free to, if you'd like to ask a question in person, then feel free to raise your hand and I can unmute you. 
Okay, I see that one person's raised their hands. Um, okay. Yes, you should be able to talk now. Um, Mamaru, I think you're still muted if you're asking a question. You can unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. You should be able to speak, so I think you're still muted, but unfortunately we can't hear you. Um, okay, I'll, I'll allow um, Miplo to ask the question, so we have someone else. Mpilo, you should be able to ask your question. Yeah, I see one question from Joseph uh, Hiroui. Can I react to that answer, Mr. Chema? Yes, yes, you can answer the question in the chat. Yeah, the, yeah. the question says, what is the difference between electrode engineering and interface uh, engineering? When I say actually electrode uh, engineering, I want to say about the surface uh, engineering, only considering the, the cathode, the cathode and convert the cathode bulk into surface, right? But uh, when I say uh, interface engineering, I may consider uh, around the cathode and electrolyte interface, cathode and electrolyte interface. From the cathode, I have one, one component, for example, in lithium oxygen, we have lithium, ox lithium oxide. And from the cathode side, since we are using uh, aqueous electrolyte, and since we are using graphite electrode, we have air impurities in the like. So we said there is a possibility of having lithium carbonate, right? So this lithium carbonate uh, may form an interface with my cathode material, that's lithium oxide. So when I say uh, interface engineering, I may consider the effect of uh, electrolyte uh, from the electrolyte side. Another question. Um, there is a, another question. Uh, um, you, still by Joseph. Yeah, the same person. Uh, he says, he mentioned that the metal air batteries have a number of challenges before mass production for the market. May you name uh, a few? Yes, uh, one of the challenges, as I already mentioned, the air impurity. So uh, in a real application, we cannot actually uh, use only oxygen, right? In ambient air, there are trace, uh, trace gases. So these trace gases either not have to enter or we need to protect the, uh, the carbon dioxide, for instance, because it has a big impact on uh, the performance. That's one issue, the over voltage. Uh, the other is the number of cycles, charge discharge cycle. Uh, at the research stage, it doesn't exceed actually 100 so far as I have, uh, as my uh, concern. But for real application, the, the number of cycles, charge discharge cycle should uh, exceed at least 1000, right? The one that uh, we know in the, in the lithium ion batteries before commercialization, this should actually reach at least 1,000 charge discharge uh, cycle. So uh, the, the charge discharge cycle in, in the metal uh, oxygen or metal air battery so far is not that much uh, uh, up, to, up to the level that we want. And the air impurities, uh, one issue. The other is still the safety issue uh, because the uh, it's intense actually to use the metal as the anode, right? So, which is actually very difficult. This uh, lithium, for example, if you consider lithium, is highly explosive. So, uh, the safety issue would be uh, an issue in this case. If it interacts with uh, oxygen, interacts with uh, water, then it will explode. Therefore, uh, before we enter before we enter the market, we need to also fix. The, uh, the the issue, the safety issue. Uh, later to the uh, dendrite formation. If there is a dendrite uh, formation from the, that extends 
the metal from anode to cathode and the electron. Instead of going the external circuit, it starts going through the electrolyte and that results a short circuit. That's the reason for, uh, for exploring or uh, fire, uh, fire uh, exhibition, right? So the safety issue, uh, air impurities, the over voltage, number of cycles, uh, these are some of the challenges that we need to address uh, uh, in, the, in the, the year ahead. Any other questions? I, th I think M. Pilo raised their hand. I've permitted them to talk, so if you can unmute yourself to ask your question, then feel free to. Okay. Well, while we're waiting, there is a question, what's the difference between the bulk and the surface in the chat? Hello, Panu? Uh, you need to unmute oh, yourself, okay. yes. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, the bulk, when you say the bulk, uh, you know, it, it's uh, growing all X and Y and Z direction, it's a 3D. Uh, structure, but when you say uh, surface, it is just, it's a plane, it's a 2D, uh, 2D uh, plane, so it's a big difference, right? So uh, when we model this in um, computation, we introduce a vacuum layer in one of the, one of these um, uh, axes. Uh, usually we apply a vacuum layer along the z-axis, so that uh, we can consider this as a surface or as a plane and see electronic and other activities surface. But when we say bulk, uh, it's, it actually it's a periodic uh, system in all the three uh, directions. Okay. Um, so, yes, Mamoru, I, I noticed that you raised your hand earlier, so I can allow you to talk again if you still would like to ask your question. So you should be able to speak now. Um, so, yeah, Mamoru, Alan, if you, if you can unmute yourself, otherwise... You can um, write. Not... Yeah, otherwise you can write in the Q&A. Okay, sorry, yeah, so you're, okay. Um, so yeah, are there any other questions? Okay, if there's no other questions. Um, I, then... Can I just add one question? So, um, yeah. based on your experience, um, you know, now, what do you see as the next generation materials that we should be looking at for improved battery application? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, yeah, there are a number of uh, new generation battery types. Uh, metal uh, oxygen battery or metal air battery is one of them. The other is uh, uh, metal sulfur uh, batteries. Uh, there are also research going on. And um, again, for uh, electricity appliances, for this kind of, for these technologies that we can apply for uh, smartphones, for laptops, for the like, uh, I think still uh, the lithium-ion batteries are uh, uh, working very good and people are trying to improve the existing uh, lithium-ion batteries by changing uh, the cathode uh, chemistry. But for if it is for large scale uh, electricity production for uh, users household or for to connect to the uh, grid, uh, I suggest the redox flow batteries. Redox flow batteries, 
uh, they are really very promising and people are also working hard in some places they also implement them and for large scale electric production the redox flow batteries are really very promising uh, for a vehicle application i still stuck with the metal uh, oxygen batteries because their specific energy is uh, five to 10 times higher than the existing ones. So with that means um, if you once charge your battery with a metal oxygen battery, you can drive up to 500, 600 kilometer per single charge. Uh, even though still this is under research and development, but it's really uh, promising. So. Metal oxygen is one of the uh, promising candidate for vehicle, for powering uh, electric vehicles uh, for future. Uh, during uh, uh, my PhD, the people in the, in the, uh, in the community of uh, metal oxygen batteries, they were expecting to see these batteries on road uh, by the uh, end of uh, 2020. Uh, but uh, we are still in 2023, so uh, I'm still uh, optimistic to see these uh, batteries uh, on road in the coming uh, few few years, particularly for uh, electric vehicle application. And other uh, class of materials that I and you are also working in the magazine uh, stuff. Uh, so these are also uh, promising. And Dr. George also mentioned the heterostructures. We can also consider, uh, I think, investigating heterostructures for a better uh, lithium ion battery applications that we can actually uh, consider for, for uh, uh, experiment or for practical application in, in the future. But it's really very, very, very uh, challenging question. It still needs a lot of uh, review, a lot of uh, uh, work. Right, but uh, as, as my knowledge is concerned, uh, these are my suggestions. Um, no, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, if there are no other questions, then I can perhaps thank our speaker again for a very interesting talk. And um, yeah, I think we can end today's session and hopefully see you all next week for um, the third lecture in the, the New Tech Mini School. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.